Hi, I'm Colin G. West, and this is Poker Science. Today is about backdoor draws, not to be confused with drawings of backdoors, which are a lot less interesting. A backdoor draw, of course, is when you don't have a draw yet, but you have a draw to a draw. Or to put it another way, it means you need help on both the turn and the river in order to make your hand. The classic example is having three spades on the flop. If you can get another spade on the turn and another on the river, you make your flush. Of course, this is harder than getting a traditional flush draw to come in, but you might be surprised how much harder. If you have a regular flush draw on the flop, you have about a 35% chance to make the flush by the river. If it's only a backdoor flush draw, that percentage drops to 4%. It may be just one extra card, but that extra card makes it exponentially less likely. Obviously, it's basically never worth calling down just to chase one of these. You'd have to make 25 times your money back every time you won just to break even in the long run. That said, there are still times where these matter. If you're in a marginal spot, for example, a backdoor draw might be the tiebreaker that keeps you in a hand, so it's worth digging into the details here a little further. In addition to the backdoor flush draw, you could also have a backdoor straight draw. But be careful, not all of these are created equal. The best case scenario is three connected cards, like 10 Jack Queen. This is actually a better spot than the 4% backdoor flush, though only barely. You have about a 4.5% chance of making your backdoor straight draw in this case. That's because there are actually three ways you can make it happen. 8-9, 9-King, or King-Ace. But contrast this with a situation where you have something like 9-Jack-King. Technically, then you'd still have a backdoor straight draw, but it's almost misleading to use the same term in that case. Because in that situation, there's only one pair of cards that can help you out. A 10 and a Queen. With only one helpful pair compared to three, this means you're three times less likely to get there than you would have been if the cards had been completely connected, which also means this draw is about three times less valuable as well. If you want the technical details, and I assume you do because you're the kind of person who watches a YouTube show called Poker Science, you get about a 1.5% chance for each pair of cards that could complete your straight. Using this rule, you can figure out how to handle a one-gap backdoor straight draw, something like 9-Jack-Queen or a situation like Jack-Queen-King, which at first glance seems just as good as 10-Jack-Queen, but actually isn't because there's no way to complete your straight with two higher cards. In that situation, your only options are 9-10 or 10-Ace. So with two pairs that can help you, you have a 3% chance of getting there. If you're a player who likes thinking in terms of outs, you may have heard the rule of thumb that a backdoor draw is worth one extra out. There's some truth to this, but there are also two reasons to be careful about it. The odds of making a backdoor flush draw or a good backdoor straight draw are pretty close to the odds bump you get from an extra out. But as we just saw, there are lots of backdoor straight draws which are two or even three times worse than that. Perhaps more importantly, a backdoor draw requires you to make it to the river, unlike a traditional out. So make sure you're taking into account the cost of any turn bets when you do your decision making. By the way, sometimes when a player totally misses the flop, they say they have a backdoor trips draw, which is another way of saying, I don't have anything, so I'm not going to stay in the hand, but I like being the center of attention, so I'm going to joke about it until I fold. Of course, a backdoor trips draw can get there, but if you're wondering, it only does so 0.4% of the time. This is actually less likely than improving to quads when you flop a set. In other words, don't bet the farm on it. Or if you do, make sure you have a plan to get 250 farms back every time you win. 